Hello everyone, my name is Lotus Sandavella. This is a review. There has been a lot of early screenings for this movie, and it's free too, like Jesus Christ. I get it, everyone is hyped, and clearly the creators are hyped as well, but having so many early screenings, free on that matter, is a bit too much. I mean, if a peasant like me is able to see a free early screening, you know there's a slight problem with that. But anyway, I can't complain too much because it is free and I get to see it a month early, so yay! Let's go over the things I don't like about the movie. It is clearly they made an aligned continuity story about Megatron and Optimus, but they have their own twist to it. Both Orion and D16 are miners and I'm not talking about the underage kid. I'm talking about the workers that work in the mines. There is a few problems with the story of Transformers 1 that may be seen as nitpicking and yeah I'm nitpicking at this point but I can't help it. I have to address this shit. Let's start off with the names. The reason Megatron was named D16 was because he was a low class individual. He was disposable and useless. Low tier Transformers are the ones with the common alt modes or useless alt modes and in turn the government never bothered giving them proper names because those individuals working in the mines are slaving away and most likely will die. So they give them letters and numbers as names. Orion Pax was given a real name because he was a high class individual and had a job as an archivist slash data clerk. The movie doesn't really explore much of the classism part of the Align setup. And I get it, it's a PG movie, they have to make it kid friendly, but ugh. I and so many many people would have liked a BG-13 movie more than the PG Transformers one. They could have explored more about the classism part and not restricted to only one or two characters who are a classist asshole. Getting back on a naming part, hearing Orion Pax having a complete and real name in the movie kinda contradicts itself. D16, B127, and hell, even Alita 1 sounds like low tier individuals, while Orion Pax sounds high class. I know I'm nitpicking on the name bit, but a character's name is so important to the story. A name reflects a character's personality and them as a whole. I get wanting to stick with Orion Pax for Optimus Prime because that is what he was used to be called, but it doesn't go well with the story they're trying to make. And it kind of makes Orion Pax more privileged than others since his actions for the most part don't have major consequences to them. Sentinel Prime has been used as a villain many times, so when I heard his name and him being set up as kind of a twist villain, I was not surprised. <sighs> I'm just tired of Sentinel Prime being the only villain aside from Megatron, and to top it off making him only a twist villain is getting old and predictable. You hear that? That's the someone using the bathroom. Excuse that, please. So D16's transition to being Megatron and being evil was forced. Megatron was always better when it came to becoming evil. I'm mostly talking about TF Prime, but in the aligned continuity, however, he felt betrayed and manipulated by Orion Pax to make himself seem better to the High Council. That is what he believed. He felt that Orion would not change Cybertron for the better, and so he thought, screw this, I'm taking the matters into my own hands. To make a Megatron evil, you can make him of two ways. You can make him like G1 Megatron, make him evil right off the bat. Because like I said in my hour long Megatron video, villains don't need a deeper morals or meaning to their villainy. They can just be evil for the sake of being evil or because they love it. In IDW D16's case, D16 gradually became evil. He had a lot of upbringing once he was made. He was a low class individual forced to work 
work in a job he did not like. The government was after him once he started to preach about freedom. The government almost brainwashed and erased his mind. His mentor was dying and was presumed dead. He went to jail for simply being present in a bar fight he was not a part of. He was beaten up in jail. He's seen a fellow miner being killed by an Autobot guard. He joined the gladiatorial pits. He caused the war. Are you trying to see what I'm getting at? All this buildup is what caused him to be evil. It did not just happen at an instant. And there's so many other reasons for all the shit IDW Megatron suffers and his validations for being evil is clearly justified because all of the stuff he suffered. In Transformers 1 case, D-16 was being lied to all his life and yeah, his life had no meaning now that he found out the truth. I get his hatred and rage for wanting to fight and kill Sentinel Prime. But he took his anger out on Orion, who simply opened his eyes to see the truth and as a result his villainy was rushed because there were no real reasons for him on hating Orion Pax. Orion's actions were selfish and reckless, but they didn't really put them in major danger or punishment. Megatron didn't seem like he was too bothered by it either way. I mean afterwards, yeah, he was upset that he was forced into the race, but it quickly faded once they were put in a good position at the end. So when he snapped on Orion on the map part bit, it felt like an asshole move because Orion did nothing wrong at that point. Also, seeing D16 letting Orion fall into the well of Allspark, it was so forced at that point. I get anger and rage blinds a person's actions and decisions, but these two were longtime friends. And I get Orion's comparison to Sentinel Prime made him upset, but I, it was still kind of rushed in my opinion. And like I said, longtime friends just don't betray each other like that. Not after what they've been through and all the moments the movie showed us on how inseparable they are. There were a lot of wholesome and go moments between the two and just seeing it all fall apart just in an instant felt so rushed. And I know some people will say that having his T-Cog, the power went through his head, but either way, it still felt rushed nonetheless. Since Megatron slash D-16 didn't even had a taste of power yet. With IDW Megatron, he had power, but it didn't corrupt him right away. It took him years to become evil. And it happened during the war as well, so it makes sense there. This issue, however, did not make the movie bad. Once again, let me show you an excerpt of what I said in my non-spoiler review about this movie. After the plot is set in stone. To me, it kind of feels like it is rushed because they do have to make D-16 the villain and make him Megatron. Making a villain needs to happen gradually as the movie goes on and to me, you can't really fit it in in an hour and a half movie when other characters need to be developed as well. But what they did is they combine both Optimus and Megatron's origin as one so one can't exist without the other. But they did lean more on Optimus origin story because in any media you can only have one main character to focus on. It's hard to pull off two main characters at the same time when you only have an hour and a half to develop them. So I can excuse them for rushing D16 development in the movie. But it's hardly noticeable for the average person because since I like to nitpick and critic things rather harshly, but it doesn't mean I didn't like it. They handled the origins the best that they could, and it came out beautifully and well developed. There is only one cliche in this movie that irks me, and that is using the villain's own words against themselves basically means they expose themselves. Zootopia did this, Coco did this, and other fucking movies have done this. It hasn't been done to death, but I'm tired of seeing it because it is a cheap and lazy way to expose the villain's true nature rather than gradually making the villain into a villain. They can be manipulative, of course, but there's gotta be another way to solve this manipulation rather than making a quick expose video about it. Oh my god, Sentinel Prime is cancelled! He hates the homos! He hates relationships! He's a racist! He's a xenophobe! He's a biophobe! Cancel him! Cancel him! Make the expose video! Do it! 
And that is pretty much what I don't like about the movie. It's not a lot because it's genuinely a good movie. It's a good movie as a beginner for someone who isn't a Transformer fan, but it's also a good movie for a fan as well. You get lore, you get good plot, you get well-developed characters. It's a family-friendly movie for all ages. The CGI is beautiful. The environment is crisp. The designs of the characters changes, especially from Megatron and Optimus. They get three different designs and it gets better and better. Insert toy marketing here! I love that they put their own twist to their designs and not make it an obvious rehash. All in all, I love the movie even with the flaws it has. I enjoyed it. It is one of the best Transformer movies that has been released. And you know what? Fuck it. It's even better than the G1 movie. There, I said it. Crucify me. But it's a legit good movie. I can go on and on about how good the movie is, but it's better if you watch it for yourself and see the true beauties of it. I rate this movie 9 out of freaking 10. It's a must watch. Watch the fucking movie!